Are you wanting to know what's the perfect intake manifold for your turbo Honda K series? Well, today we did the test so you don't have to. In some of our recent content, we've really been diving deep into the Honda K24 engine, specifically on stock configurations. We recently performed this intake manifold test that you might have seen on our channel already that went over the three popular intake manifold offerings from Skunk 2 and how they perform on a stock K24A long block in its naturally aspirated form. Today we took that same recipe and we applied it to a turbocharged application and we paired it up with a popular Gen 2 6466 turbocharger and an Artec Sidewinder manifold. Along with that was also used a Tile 50mm blow-off valve, Tile's 44mm waste gates, and for fueling we decided to use a 2600cc injector by Injector Dynamic that's flowing pump gas 93 octane gasoline that you can pick up at any gas station. While this is a stock K24 engine, we decided to still go with a larger turbo, in this case a 6466 for a couple reasons. This is an extremely popular option for Honda K-Series guys as the engine is very efficient and able to flow a lot of air. It also leaves some headroom if the person at home wants to have this type of turbocharger at a lower boost target like we did today and still wants to make more power in the future by increasing that boost down the line. For each test done today, we decided to target the exact same boost so we could have perfect comparison of data. The target boost for today was 17 and a half pounds and after each run, adjustments were made to stay on that target as you'll see throughout the video. As mentioned before, the three tests are surrounding different intake manifolds. The three used today would be the Skunk 2 Pro Series, the Ultra Street, and then followed by the largest, the Ultra Race. For the first test, we decided to start with a baseline of the Pro Series, and in previous testing, we found this one to have the most torque, as it is the smallest plenum, and it's the most user-friendly as it does have a similar package to an OEM Honda RBC manifold. Now that we have a baseline run to go off of, we can check the data and it looks like we made 530.7 horsepower and a max of 406.8 torque. Pretty good power band right there. Let's go ahead and add in our Skunk 2 Ultra Street Manifold and see if we pick up or lose any power. band is extremely similar but we do have some gains up top. We did pick up nearly 7 horsepower on this run and we only lost roughly 3 foot pounds of torque. What you'll notice here is that the power band is extremely similar, but we do have a little bit more peak torque on the lower RPM with the Pro Manifold. We'll see increase in the higher RPM here with the horsepower itself, and that may be desirable in a drag race environment where you'll be specifically in a higher RPM for more of your run. Now that we have those two runs in the books, let's go back to the engine dyno and see what happened with the 90 millimeter throttle body on a Skunk 2 Ultra Race Manifold, the largest of the three used today. Now here's where the test got a little more interesting. While you did see a little more power up in that higher RPM with the Ultra Race Manifold, we did see a huge dip in torque, especially down low in the lower RPM section. With the Pro Series Manifold, the original of the three, we had less horsepower up top, but made 406 foot-pounds of torque. 
Now on this Ultra Race manifold, we only made 380 foot-pounds of torque, and there is a section where the Ultra Race outperforms the Ultra Street for a couple hundred RPM, while keeping a very similar peak horsepower number at the end of the run. Let's remember briefly that this is at the exact same boost target throughout the whole run, and you can see the graphs here laying over that boost target throughout the whole RPM range, and it's very easy to understand that the target stayed the same. And the only difference are the intake manifolds and the throttle body in this third run case. What does that tell us for your selection at home when you're going for an intake manifold on your Turbo K series? If you're trying to stay very fast spool and you want as much torque down low, the Ultra Street and Pro Series manifold might be a better selection for you. If you're a dedicated drag car that will only live at that higher RPM and you don't care that much about low end torque, then the Ultra Race might be a better selection. But I don't think we've touched exactly on where the Ultra Race shines the best just yet. Like we talked about earlier, this is a completely stock K24 engine and we're only making that low 500 horsepower range. And if we were pushing somewhere in that 900 or 1000 horsepower range, I feel these tests would be vastly different. While it might be a little difficult to follow all these graphs on screen in video format, we also did put together a blog post that you can find at realstreetperformance.com. We'll go ahead and link that below in the description, that way you can quickly access it. And at that point, you can follow the information at your own pace and don't have to worry about clicking pause or get screen grabs and you'll have full resolution content of these graphs for you to make your decisions at home. If you've enjoyed this type of content and would like to see more like it, we would really appreciate if you can give us your business here at Real Street. By you shopping with us, we're able to do more content like this and help you guys make informed decisions when shopping at home. If you have any questions, please let us know in the comment section below. These recommendations for the videos that we've been doing have come directly from you guys wanting to see things tested here in-house. So if you could continue doing those types of questions and requests in the comments, we are reading and we are taking those into account. So we really appreciate every comment leave below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.